They they let me play a lot with them, and it's it's actually probably my greatest joy of a retreat weekend is just to be able to play along with uh, people that can really play, people that are really gifted. So uh, thank you guys for that, and thank you for all your work this weekend. And what are we going to open with? We are going to sing the song forever on page twenty six. All right.
We sing, All Great is Our God, on page 31. Church, the Holy Christian Church, 
for the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, for the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You can go ahead and put your book with the side of this. I've got a little bit to share with you. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, thank you for the gifts that you give. Thank you for the gift of your word. And now, Lord, we pray for the presence and the power of that Holy Spirit that you sent after your son's ascension to his throne in heaven. That same Holy Spirit be with us now. Open our hearts, open our minds to the word that you have set before us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, just a little behind the scenes, behind the curtain thing. We, we don't know what text uh, we're going to preach on on Sunday here on the retreat at church. <laughs> on the Sunday here, it just says uh, reading. And we don't really think about the reading until we kind of see how the weekend goes and, 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 and see how the Spirit leads. And so last night, uh, the, we had some moments. And uh, as frequently we need to do, if we're focusing on one single passage of Scripture, it's always a really good idea for us to read around it. And so that theme verse for this weekend, James 4, 8, draw near to God and he will draw near to you, is surrounded by some gold uh, in those other verses that, that Deacon Mike read. So I want to reflect on those a little bit. I just want to start by telling you this, that none of any of this stuff that you have learned out of this Brother Lawrence book or our reflections on it is salvific. It doesn't save you. It doesn't save you. And so if you go home and you fail at this miserably and you feel further away from the Lord than ever before, it doesn't save you, so don't worry about it. It's not salvific. Know that you're saved by grace through faith in Christ. If we've reminded you of something other than all this Brother Lawrence stuff, it's that very thing. You're forgiven through his sacrifice for us. In reading that text from James, it struck me that our faith relationship with Jesus is supposed to be like a marriage. In Scripture, Paul often uses the metaphor Jesus himself uses the metaphor. John in Revelation uses the metaphor as Jesus being the bridegroom and the church being his bride, right? Did your translation say adulteresses or adulterers? Adulteresses. That's interesting because we are the bride of Christ. He's the bridegroom. So fittingly, fittingly, it would be adulteresses, if you will. This text is reflective of that idea that our faith lives are like a marriage between us and our bridegroom, Jesus. And so this text opens up with a pretty harsh, you adulterous people, you adulterous people. Now, look, when James writes that, he doesn't mean that we're a bunch of scumbags out messing around on our wives, you know, chasing women around and such. It's not because we cheat on our earthly spouses that James calls us adulterers or adulteresses. It's because we cheat on God. We cheat on God. We chase after other things and relationships. We turn our backs on him. We cheat on God. We're adulterers. We're adulterers. But then James, much like our dear brother Lawrence, gives us some very wise counsel, some marital counsel, if you will, on how to keep this relationship on track. And I kind of mentioned this this morning. If you think about it, don't you want to be in the absolute best relationship that you can be? in any earthly relationship that you have, and certainly in our spiritual relationship. You're married, you want your marriage to be the best it can be. You're a friend, you want that friendship to be the best it can be. You're a parent, you want that relationship with your kids to be the best that it can be. 
We strive towards these things. And all of God's word and all of his commandments lead us in this relationship, in the vertical with him, and in these relationships, in the horizontal with one another. <coughs> well, James gives us the recipe. And strangely, it echoes Brother Lawrence's recipe. The first ingredient is this. Submit to God. And this is right out of the text that Mike just read. Submit to God. Let him lead. Let him be the Lord of your life. If you call him your Lord, then let him lead you. Submit. Second, resist. Resist the devil. Turn from sin. Seek to not yield to temptation. Resist the devil. Next, James tells, James tells us, come near to God. And hopefully this weekend you've tasted some of the many ways that you can do that. Through scripture, through the fellowship of other brothers in Christ, through praise, through music, through acts of service, through word and sacrament. Wash your hands, purify your hearts, repent. That's what James is talking about here. Repent of your sins. Grieve over it. When James, James says grieve, mourn, and wail, it doesn't mean to make yourself this, this tormented facade. Grieve over your sinfulness. Weep over it. And finally, humble yourself before God. So again, this none of this is salvific. It doesn't say this. It's not salvific. But why not have the best marriage with God possible? Why not move beyond knowing about Him knowing him. Why not let the joy and closeness and authenticity of that relationship spill over to every other relationship in your life? One of the things I told several of the men yesterday whose feet I washed was this. Look for feet to wash when you get back home. Look for people to serve. Look for ways to further God's kingdom. Not for your own sake, but for the sake of Christ's bride, his church. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord unto life everlasting. Amen. amen. We pray. Father God, we thank you for this weekend. We're reaching the point of the weekend, maybe, that our hearts are turning to those at home. We pray, Lord, that you've watched over them and kept them safe in our absence. We thank you for the relationships that you bless us with, Lord. Friends, family, co-workers. We pray that you would grant us the opportunity, the eyes to see those chances we have to wash the feet of others. We pray for our brother Rudiger. We thank you that he's feeling so much better. We thank you for all of his efforts on this weekend, Lord. I know many of the men here don't know what a pivotal part he plays in these weekends. This weekend had his thumbprints all over it, Lord. And we just thank you for his servant's heart. We thank you that our principal, Amy, is healing so well after that cancer surgery earlier this week. We thank you for the many blessings of the ministries that we engage in for your name's sake at Christ Lutheran Church and School. We pray your continued blessings over our planning, our strategic planning processes, our visioning, <clears throat> that it would all bring glory to you, Lord, and that it would light a fire under, under the backsides of many that maybe have been waiting for or looking for an opportunity to jump in and serve you. Father, we pray that uh, what we've learned this weekend in terms of practicing 
your presence would spill over into the rest of our relationships, Lord. Make us better men. Make us better husbands, fathers, grandparents. Make us better. All the while realizing that being better isn't what saves us. Because your son did all the work to accomplish that. We thank you and praise you for that gift. Father God, all of these prayers and those that we name silently in our hearts, we lift them to you now in the words that your precious son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, wherever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Please do in remembrance of me. Same way, also after supper, he took the cup again, he gave thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. As often as you drink of it, this do in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. So we will. Uh, do Holy Communion in the same fashion we did the first night of worship. We'll commune the, uh, the music team first, uh, and then we can just come up uh, single file. We'll do it by intention again. Uh, we'll give you a piece of bread, and then you will get that in the water. We will be singing How Deep the Father's Love for Us on page three. Okay. Come to the table, then the feast is ready. Thank you. 
body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior strengthen and preserve you and hold you steadfast in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. His peace and joy be with you today and always. Amen. Amen. And now receive the benediction of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you in favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. So I'm looking at the schedule and it says sending message. And although my message in the sermon could very well qualify as that, I just want to leave you with one thing. If there is one page uh, out of your workbook that I would cut out and tape to my bathroom mirror or put under my blotter at work uh, or uh, just tuck into the front cover of my Bible to remind myself. It would be page 9 and it's not just because it was one of my uh, presentations. <laughs> but somebody brought this up to me and they said, you know, uh, all these things on this list of these virtues to seek are actually a very good form for confession. Somebody asked Luther, well, how do I examine my conscience? How do I examine myself? And Luther said, well, look at the Ten Commandments. That's pretty simple. Look at this, though, perhaps as a form of confession. How have I sinned against you, Lord, through my bustle and hurt? How many times have I failed to maintain a calm and peaceful demeanor? How many times have I not been gentle in my disposition? How many times have I lost my temper or my patience? Not only with those I love, but with those I don't know. How many times have I been dishonest, Lord, with you or with myself or with others? When have I lacked charity? When have I turned a blind eye to the needs of others? When have I been prideful? When have I been so humble that I became proud of how humble I was? <laughs> how many chances have I missed to build others up instead of choosing to tear them down? How have I made my life too complicated with things, with possessions? When have I failed to love my neighbor? When have I talked when my silence would have been much more effective and powerful? When have I chosen to take my own path instead of being guided by my own, by my faith that you blessed me with, Lord? When have I failed to submit to your plan for my life? When have I been preoccupied with the concerns of the world? How many times have I deviated from the course that you have set before me? So hold on to this and let it be a, a compass, let it be a ruler, a road map, if you will. None of this saves you, man. It's not self -it. Don't get caught up in that. That's one of the reasons Luther had such a problem with James. It's because initially when he read it, it smacked to him of works righteousness. But when he became a little bit more mature in his faith, he realized that this is just the way God wants us to live out our lives. That's all. It doesn't save you. So that's my sending message. That's what I would send you down the hill with. Save page nine. And if you lose it, you can just hit me up. I've got it. <laughs> in the USC somewhere. Okay. So I think we uh, are scheduled for food at 1130. Um, you have about 11 or 12 minutes now. You can maybe use that time to get your cards loaded out. Uh, the band's going to play us out. You can stay and, and sing, or, or you can get on with the tasks uh, to prepare yourself to, uh, to head down that hill. Okay. Singing forever again. Who wants to sing with us? All right. Singing forever, forever. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh